first thing that I want to bring up is this bill called the Ultimate Cancel Act. This is from uh, a guy named Blaise Angolia in Florida. So here is the actual full text of the bill. I'll put this down in the uh, chat for you guys so that you can check it out. That's the entire text. It's pretty short. I don't know if we need to read through this entire thing. Let me go ahead and turn on my window here. This is the entire text of the um, Ultimate Cancel Act. And basically what this would do, long story short, we don't really need to read this. I'm not going to, you know, just, but you can get the URL off of that for those of you not watching on Twitch. And, um, oh, we can turn that off. Huh, we don't need that. So what exactly is this, right? The Ultimate Cancel Act. Well, it essentially would outlaw the Democratic Party in Florida. No more Democratic Party, right? Now, how does this actually work? Well, what it is is that um, <laughs> we can kind of read through it a little bit. Yeah, you know, let's turn it back on just so we can kind of read through it together, right? So here we go. An act relating to political parties providing short title, blah, 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 enacted by the legislature of Florida. Okay. So the division shall immediately cancel the filings of a political party to include its registration and approved status as a political party if the party's platform had previously advocated for or been in support of slavery or involuntary servitude in addition to applicable procedures provided for in blah, 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 blah. Basically, if your political party at some point was in support of slavery, then you're no longer allowed to be a political party. Now, why did he bring up slavery? Because this is a... a favorite talking point for the assholes on the right. They always say, like, you know, the Democratic Party was the party in support of slavery. Because they were, technically. 200, you know, um, actually 100 and... what point? 160 years ago at this point. <laughs> right? 170 years ago. Was... has it been 60? Yeah, 60 years. Right. What, 1860? That's 160 years from now? From... from before, right? Previously. Um... But they're failing to mention, of course, is that the, um... Here, let's go ahead and turn that off so you guys can actually see some artwork on the art and, and politics stream here. Now, of course, what they're failing to mention is that um, there was an ideological shift between, you know, then and now, where all the Southern racist Democrats switched over to the Republican Party. Um, starting in around the 1960s or so, starting with civil rights and ending roughly in the 80s, that's when the ideological shift happened, it's almost like there was a strategy of some kind in the South, some kind of Southern strategy, if you will, that the uh, Republican Party decided to recruit the old Dixiecrats and, and things like that and get them over to their side, right? They seem to be forgetting that part, and every time you get a Republican that says that, oh, well, we, you know, the Democrats supported slavery, blah, 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 they always leave that part out. It's like, yeah, today, which party would be supporting slavery today? Which party has people who actually say that uh, black people were better off under slavery today? Right? I'm sure you've seen those videos. I'm not going to bother pulling any of them up, but I'm sure you've seen those videos of, uh, you know, people going out and interviewing Trump supporters and having, and, you know, and they're saying shit like, oh, well, slavery, it was better for them. Black people were better under slavery then than they are now. You know, they had families back then, shit like that. Like, that makes it, like, okay, <laughs> the fact that you had, like, a, a husband and a wife, like, that makes it better. It's like, oh, who cares if you're, like, you know, virtual frickin' property, or not virtual property, like, fucking literal property, 
<laughs> right? Who cares if you're literally owned by somebody as long as you can, like, have, like, a, you know, a marriage. <laughs> it's the stupidest, it's the stupidest shit ever. Like, you know, which party nowadays is in support of the legacy of, of slavery? Right? Which one, which one is actually, like, manipulating its voters, its voting base with, with, uh, you know, racism, <laughs> right? In order, I mean, is it the Republicans or the Democrats, right? Which, which party now is like trying to stop voting rights, right? Is in support of militarism and like militarizing the police, you know? In fact, if you want to say, because the actual text of the law says slavery or involuntary servitude, right well you know if you get arrested and you go to prison that's involuntary servitude right if you work in like you know the, the actual text of the 13th amendment right actually says slavery is abolished except when you go to prison that's essentially what it says i don't have it open in front of me but that's what it says it says in prison you can basically be forced to work against your will so, if you support the prison industrial complex, like a lot of Republicans are wont to do, does that mean that this bill would outlaw your political party? You know? I mean, kind of sounds like it would get rid of the Republicans just as much as the Democrats, right? So, that's a little bit of a bullshit. That's bullshit. Anyway... A little bit more of what it says. If the division cancels the filings of a political party, the division must provide notice to each voter registered with a canceled party that the political party has been canceled and his or her voter registration information will now reflect no party affiliation and provide procedures for the voter to update his or her party affiliation to an active political party. Any political party canceled pursuant to this subsection may register... <clears throat> with the department by filing a certificate showing the name of the organization and the names and addresses of its current officers, including the members of its executive committee, accompanied by complete uniform statewide voter registration application as specified in blah, 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 blah. The name of the organization must be substantially different from the name of any other party previously registered with the department. The filing may not be Submit it later than six months before any election in which the political party seeking to register wishes to nominate candidates for public office. Right. I suspect this has a little bit to do with it as well. That they would be like, okay, Democrats are now outlawed. Okay, well, you can rename your party, but oh, no, it's six months before an election. Sorry, can't run anyone. <laughs> I suspect that is a little bit to do with it also. Now, of course, there is no way in hell this law is getting passed. All right. But it's just the gumption that somebody would even file this is the most ridiculous fucking part of it. The idea that, you know, that this person who did this, his name was Blasignolia, right? That was the name of the actual, uh, you know fascist douchebag who submitted this right the idea that he could do that and feel like that would help him is the disturbing part like what should happen is that guy should be labeled a crank and he should lose his next election and if there were democrats with any actual brains or ability who knew how to campaign in this guy's district, they should be able to eat his fucking... eat him for lunch when it comes to the next election. Right. Why is this shit not on every, like... You know, and that's the thing that always gets me. Like, this, Democrats are fucking weak. They're so weak. It's like, man, they give you all the ammunition you need. You know, this guy tried to outlaw his political opposition. You should be making, like commercials of that and playing it 24 7 say look at this fucking fascist he tried to outlaws what the hell it's freedom you know like <laughs> right like 
That's what the first thing that should be happening. Secondly, you know, of course this is bullshit. This will never go anywhere, and even if it did pass, it would get struck down in a nanosecond. But then again, you never know, because our Supreme Court is highly corrupt and doesn't actually give a shit about the law anymore. You know? So maybe the Supreme Court would let it go, because they're a bunch of assholes. We don't know about that. So you don't want it to actually get that far, right? Here's a quote from Blaise Igno Ignolia. Ig Ignoglia. Ignoglia? How do you pronounce this guy's name? I have no idea. Blaise. B L A I S E. I don't know. I don't know why somebody would name their kid that. But anyway, here's a quote by him in regards to this law. For years, I've been watching leftist Democrats cancel people, places, and things for <laughs> things that I have happened that have happened in the last 250 years. Wait, for years I've been watching leftist Democrats cancel people, places, and things for things that have happened in the past 250 years. Oh, okay, I don't know how the fuck you cancel a thing, but the fuck is he talking about? Oh, here we go. I thought it was hypocritical that you have these Democrats waiting to remove statues or renaming buildings because of things that tie back to slavery. Well, under that same metric then, the Florida Democrat, the Democratic Party itself should be canceled. So there you go. That, uh, that's what I guess what he means when you say cancel a thing. <laughs> right. It's like, how the fuck do you cancel a thing? It, does, it doesn't, a thing doesn't have a career that you can, but I guess that's what they mean, taking down statues. Which is funny because if this, you know, if they really cared about slavery, then you would think that they would, you know, want to remove statues that celebrate the Confederacy, right? Like, and that's the other thing. When, when, yeah, whenever you get, like, Republicans talking about, uh, like, you know, we're the party of freedom, the party of Lincoln, and we were against slavery, but they're the ones making such a big goddamn deal when we try to remove the legacy of slavery, because, you know, that's what those statues are, right? It's not like all of these statues to, like, you know, the Confederate generals and stuff were erected during the Civil War. Like, they weren't. You know, they were erected during the Civil Rights era in order to intimidate people who were marching for civil rights. <laughs> that's why, that's where all the... High, the Robert E. Lee high schools and stuff like that, and the, the Jefferson Davis, like, underpasses and things, and statues to all of these, like, you know, Confederate generals and stuff. That's where all of that shit comes from. It comes from, basically, racist elements in the South during the, um, you know, erecting these statues during the Civil Rights Movement. Right. In order to just kind of send a message saying, hey, you know... Before you guys get uppity, remember what happened, right? That's what it was. That's why all those statues exist in the first place. Because losers usually don't get statues. When you lose a war, you don't get celebrated, right? <laughs> you lost. So the winners usually are the ones who put up statues. There should be statues of Abraham Lincoln and, like, General Sherman <laughs> and, like, you know and Andrew Jackson and stuff. Those those are where the statues should actually be. Of, you know what I mean? So, anyway, so that's a load of freaking baloney, right? You know, and that's the thing that, I, you know, it's sort of like the other the other thing about that, right? The, the idea that uh, canceling a statue or, you know, something to that effect, right? Wanting to remove the the legacy of slavery is like the same thing as basically disenfranchising five million people in Florida. It is laughable as well. I mean, if, if this law were to actually pass, let's say that we lived in an alternate universe where this actually got traction and, and you know, became law. I mean, crazier things have happened, right? Instantly, 5 million people in Florida can't vote anymore. <laughs> right? So Florida only has a population of 22 million, which actually is pretty big when it comes to a state. You know, it's, it's roughly half the size of California. Right? 
but only about half of those people vote in every election. The other half are either children, you know, or um, can't vote for various reasons, including the fact that they are ex-felons, right? Because in Florida, Florida is one of only eight states where if you're a felon, you can't get the right to vote back. And it was like that for a long time. A long, long time. It was like, if you were a felon, permanently lose your light, right to vote. Never again. So what was happening was that millions and millions of black people and minorities were losing their rights to vote because they would get arrested for some one dumbass reason or another and be charged for a felony, right? And then they would never be able to vote again. And if you think that this is like not voter suppression then I got new this this is a legacy of slavery right here why do you think a law saying felons can't vote was put in place in the first place <laughs> right it's to target minorities because minorities are more likely when they get arrested to be charged with greater like to get like more serious charges if you get a black person and you get a white person and they do the exact same crime in the exact same way, the exact same circumstances, black person is more likely to get a more harsh sentence. That's just how it is. That's systemic racism at work. And it's that's a problem. It's like that in every state. It's not just Florida. But places like Florida, like Alabama, like Louisiana, right? Um, they have a history of that. I mean, it's like that in every state. Don't get me wrong. That shit happens in California, too. You know, it happens in New York. happens in Washington. Right? But these places have a history of that. You know? Going back decades. I mean, the other states where where um, felons can't vote like ever. You know, most states it's sort of like you can, you can vote after a little while. A few years pass. Something like that. Right? Then you get your right to vote back. There are other states, though, that where that's it. And the other ones are, of course, Wyoming, Arizona, uh, Kentucky, uh, Tennessee, and Mississippi, Alabama. So the basically deepest of the red states are the states where felons don't get to vote. And those just happen to be the states where they have a history of suppressing the votes of black people and minorities, in particular black people. So if they, you know, so don't listen when they try to tell you how oh, race has nothing to do with it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Right. Race has a lot to do with it, especially when it comes to voter suppression. Right. You never see laws like this that disproportionately affect white people. <laughs> Every time they, put, they, they pass some kind of law that restricts voting, it always hits minorities. It always hits black people harder. You know, everything from... Um, Things like voter ID, right? Or uh, back in the day during the uh, during the um, Jim Crow era, they had things like literacy tests, right? You ever seen those literacy tests? They're basically just made to confuse people. I doubt like anybody watching this could pass one of those literacy tests. You know, of course they didn't give those to white people. It was only the black people that got the fucking literacy tests, right? It's so don't you know. Don't be fooled by it. This is just another iteration of that, uh, you know, the legacy of actual slavery. And it's really more, you know, the, the irony, of course, is that they're trying to use slavery. <laughs> the fact of, you know, that one political party actually endorsed slavery in order to perpetuate slavery. That's the... Uh, Scary part. Speaking of that, speaking of voter suppression, so Florida makes up six, roughly 6.6% of the country's population. But about 20% of the people in the country who can't vote because they're ex-felons live in Florida. So just to kind of show you how bad that is, right? It's, this is, it's on purpose, you know. And back in uh, a few years ago, there was a law that got passed. It was um, 
uh, what was it? I can't remember that. It was, uh, I think, Amendment 4 in 2019 is what it was, where people got tired of this, and they finally said, hey, we want to re-enfranchise these people in Florida because there's, like, millions of people. It just doesn't, just doesn't, you know, just affect a few... No, it's it's millions of people, right, who are no longer, you know, able to vote. You know, not all felonies are violent, right? They're, they're not all murderers and, 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 like, drug dealers and rapists and stuff, you know? So plenty of people get charged with a nonviolent felony, you know, stealing something <laughs> right grand theft or some shit like that right who knows if they're actually guilty or not you know um or even getting in a fight for example you know you're out someplace some guy jumps you you get in a fight and for one reason or another you end up on the wrong side of the law in that right maybe the guy has like three or four witnesses that lie on his behalf and you're, you're the one that ends up going to jail for it Shit like that happens all the time, <laughs> right? All the time. There's lots of there's lots of ways in which you can end up in the system through basically no seemingly no fault of your own through either minor infractions or things that should not be against the law, like something like self defense, for example. You know, say you're at a nightclub or something, you get jumped, and uh, you're defending yourself, and you accidentally kill the guy. Right. And you go, oh, well, you know, you punch him or whatever. He falls down, hits his head, dies. It's like, I was defending myself. Right. But uh, there's three or four witnesses there that all they see is like, oh, well, you hit him and he died. You end up going to jail for that, even though that guy may have attacked you. Stuff like that can happen. Right. You, know, you end up being offended. Plenty of people end up going through the system who don't deserve to be there. Right. And you're supposed to be able to just serve your time, right? Do everything the right way, get out of prison, and go on with your life. You're supposed to be able to do that, right? These laws are designed to keep you in the system forever. So now because something like that happened, you can never vote ever again. And it's like, is it just a coincidence that this keeps happening to black people, to minorities? over and over and over and over is that just a coincidence or is there you know once it's like start you know once it's millions of people it's like it's not really a coincidence anymore you know there's there's obviously some kind of plan behind it right people got tired of that in 2019 they tried to pass a law to say okay we're gonna like re uh re-enfranchise these people and the conservatives and Republicans stepped in through a provision on that saying, okay, well, you have to pay off all your fines and, and fees and things first, right? Before, you, before you're allowed to vote. So just just going to prison and getting out and serving your time isn't good enough anymore. Now you got to pay off all your legal fees, right? you got to pay off all your fines, whatever. So first off, you may have thousands and thousands of dollars in fines that you'll be paying off for the rest of your life. Going to prison is expensive, right going to you know and then you you might have like a judgment against you and you have to like pay all this shit off you have restitution whatever you may have to pay all that off so you don't get to pay, you don't get to vote till you pay all that shit off right that's the first thing second thing is you may not even know that you have a fine right and this is what happened in 2022 after the uh midterms you know where there was very famously that video videos going around of of people in florida basically being arrested for voting right that's what that was all about these were people that you know voted right and were told by their um parole officers or like people the police you know they would like go to them and say hey am i able to vote and the cops themselves the police officers themselves would say yeah you're fine go ahead and do it right and then so they would like register and vote and then six months later cops show up and arrest them for voting right 
in a lot of cases. Now, this is, you know, if any of them actually, like, have decent lawyers, they'll, defi they'll definitely get off because it's bullshit. But that's the problem. It's like, well, these are people that don't have a lot of money in the first place. So how many of those people that just got busted for voting when they thought it was okay because the police told them it was okay, how many of them are going back to jail permanently? Right? Who knows? <laughs> right? I mean, is, is there any... You know, it doesn't seem to be very many, very much in the way of, uh, let's get rid of the shape dynamics here. There's not a lot of news stories following the, following the cases of these people that I've been able to see, you know. So, I don't know. Hopefully everything works out for these guys, you know. That's fascism right there. That's what that is, Okay. When you are systematically repressing people from voting and throwing them in jail for, you know, attempting to exercise their democratic rights, that is fascism. Because they're picking and choosing who gets to vote. See, under, under fascism, there is no room for democracy, right? The trappings of democracy are used in order to give it legitimacy. But... In real life, they're not interested in democracy, right? So when you get, you know, people saying, oh, well, Hitler was elected, you know, yeah, he was, but were the Nazis interested in, in democratic elections? No. Hitler was elected and then he basically became a dictator, and that was it, and there wasn't any other elections ever, right? Because they use, they use the framework of democracy to take power. Because it's not actually about the individual person or their rights. You know, fascism is about putting the right of the state above the individual. Right? And the individual is expendable. You know, the United States, like, like our system of government, is the, the main, like, principle of our system of government is that people have rights that the government are not allowed to intrude upon, you know. You have freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, right? Freedom of religion, okay? Freedom, the, the pursuit of happiness. What does that mean? That means you're allowed to do what you want when you feel like it. You're allowed to dress how you want. You're allowed to act how you want. You're allowed to say what you want. You're allowed to believe what you want. You're allowed to carry lethal weapons if you want. That's in the goddamn Constitution, like it or not. It is. Right. You're allowed to assemble with the people that you want. You're allowed to associate with the people that you want. Right. Fascists do not care about that. The whole point of fascism is that the state gets to dictate all of that. And they get to dictate who's legitimate and who isn't. Which speech is legitimate and which isn't. Right. Which beliefs are legitimate, which aren't. You know. That's what the GOP is trying to do. This is just one, <laughs> one method. You know, suppressing who gets to run for office. Outlawing political parties. What's going to happen if this were to actually pass and the Demo somebody tried to run as a Democrat in Florida? They're going to prison? <laughs> right? It's all a big joke until it happens, right, folks?